Hey Crafty Cuties, welcome back to Paper Terrace and if you are new, I'm Jessica. Today we are going to do a hidden binding technique on this journal that I'm working on. This is a Christmas journal for my friend Maddie. We're doing a journal swap and she actually made a full process video on the journal she created for me. I would love for you to go check it out because the journal she made me is amazing. I've only seen sneak peeks at this point, but go check out her process video because you will probably want to make the type of journal she made for me. But I didn't film the whole process. I just wanted to film some parts of it. Like right now, I'm going to do the binding. So this is the journal cover. And so, like I said, I wanted to do hidden binding because I didn't want to sew into this at all. Um, so this is like one of the thickest covers that I have ever made. I'm already kind of have everything prepped. So I have four signatures that I will be sewing in. If, if you don't know what hidden binding is, technically it means I'm not going to be sewing into the spine. So this will be all completely naked like that. We're going to actually sew into a spine that is not attach and then we're going to attach this into the journal so i'm going to set this aside because we don't need to work with this right now we just need everything else here so i already kind of created my little uh spine here and so one thing that you always want to make sure of is um you want the spine that you are sewing your pages into, you want it to be just a touch smaller than the spine that's in your journal. And that's so important because if you don't do that, these sides, they're not going to close very well. And the spine that you glue in here, it's going to buckle and kind of fold. Um, so that is really important. Now you can use just fabric if you want. You could use just paper. I like a combination for a couple of reasons. When I've used paper on its own, it is so hard to get the paper to fold just right. Um, and a lot of times the spine does kind of buckle. Um, I've never had one fall out or anything, but it's just, it's just not the best construction. And then fabric on its own is a little tricky because when you are sewing your signatures into just this loose piece of fabric, it's just, it's just hard to work with. So I do a combination and I like to have the paper spine for, um, for that security for, so that everything is going to be lined up really well. But then I like the fabric because having the fabric on the sides, fabric's just a lot more flexible than paper. So when we, once we glue down these side flaps, then you have just more flexibility. So I hope that makes sense. I also went ahead and already figured out my binding holes off camera. I'm just doing a four hole pamphlet stitch. I'm not gonna go over that too much. So just to kind of go over that one more time. So my paper spine is just a touch smaller than the spine that's in my book. And then the fabric that you can see that I added on here and I just sewed it to my paper, but you could glue it as well. Um, it's the same height as the journal but then it's about an inch wider on each side so that we're not just attaching straight down to the center. We're attaching to the sides. And for me, that just makes me feel like everything's in there a lot more secure. Um, so yeah, we are going to just be sewing straight into this using this. I have my awl here and I'm going to get started by actually just punching the hole straight into this. Just like if you were using your um, if you were using a template in your regular journal, you would be punching these holes straight into that spine, but we're going to go ahead and punch them into this spine. My binding template is messy, so don't even, it makes sense to me, but probably not to you. So don't even worry about that. I am punching the holes where the X's are, if you're wondering. I, it took me a few times to get the spine size just right because I was finding that the uh, spine, this spine was just a touch too wide. And when I would close the sides, it was just a little too wide. So it took me a few tries to get the shape or the shape, the size just right. So I'm going to go ahead and just punch all of these holes right where they are. 
And then once we're done with this, we're gonna use this same template to punch the holes into all four signatures, again, just like you would for any type of binding. So I'm gonna get started with these signatures in a moment and I will be back right when everything is punched and ready to be sewn in. Okay, I am going to thread my needle and I'm using waxed linen thread just like I always do. And we can get started with sewing and I am going to do this again, just like I do with all of my binding. I'm gonna start by sewing the very last row into my spine all the way to the far right. And I'm just gonna start with the hole that is number two down. And I will go ahead and line that up. So for me, I find, I find that this kind of binding is a lot trickier. Again, just because this spine isn't on a full book, it's just kind of like wobbly, but it is possible to do. And then I'm gonna go up to the top hole and then go back through to the inside of the journal. And then we're gonna go down to that third hole. Again, make, just making sure that I am lining it up to the correct hole on our spine. It's really hard to not just hold this <laughs> close to my face, so. And then we'll go back in through the bottom hole. Then we're gonna go back up to the hole that's up one. Making sure that it's not getting caught on anything as we go along. And then we go back up to the hole that we started. There is one nice perk is that I can, instead of moving my book around, I can just move the spine around to make sure that I'm like putting it in the right spot and everything. So we're going to go into that hole we started with. And then you want to make sure to have one of our ends on one side of the lane and one on the other. And I'm calling this the string that is going across here, the lane. Okay, and then you just wanna make sure that everything is pulled nice and tight. And then you can go ahead and tie like that. And then go ahead and trim your ends. The tricky part that I find the trickiest part of this binding is getting this this sewn journal panel into the journal. So I'm gonna repeat this times three. I'm gonna sew in the rest of the signatures. I'm just removing this, the pins, the, <laughs> what are these called? I'm just removing our paper clips because I don't need them anymore. So I'm gonna continue sewing in the three signatures and then we will meet back here and I'll show you how to put this into the journal securely. All right, so we have all of the signatures sewn into our external spine. And one tip that I've got for you here is to use some kind of a binder clip to hold all of these together if you can, because it does help when we are trying to sew this into the journal. You're gonna need some pretty big binder clips also, I am going to do a whole flip through, by the way, of this journal, um, probably in a separate video. Yeah, that's going to be hard to do. So I have a paper clip that I'm going to try to utilize. You don't have to do this, but it will. It'll help. Okay, so we have our nice big text block, we'll call it. And then we have our journal. So I do already have the inside covers complete here, but something to keep in mind is that when we are gonna glue this into the journal, you are gonna have those little side flaps that come out. So some people like to decorate the inside cover after. Um, that's just up to you. I'm gonna cover mine with lace and it's only like an inch on each side anyways. I like the look of it. Okay, so a couple of things here. So we are going to be gluing fabric to fabric because I 
covered my inside spine here before I knew what kind of binding I was going to do. So use a glue that you're comfortable with. I trust this one right here only, the Tombow Mono Aqua Glue. You could use Fabrifix or whatever you want. But I also use a little bit of hot glue at the top and the bottom. So we are going to get started by gluing in just the center. You don't worry about the flaps right now. So I'm going to put a crap load of glue here. So if you're gluing down uh, paper to paper, then again, just use a glue that you are comfortable with. I like using just a combination of glues, honestly. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can make my hot glue reach over here, but I'm going to put a line of hot glue at the top here and the bottom. And you got to work really, really quick once we get our glue down. So I got plenty of glue. I'm going to try to reach my hot glue gun over here, but I might not be able to get it. So just bear with me while I get the hot glue gun. Okay, so I've got to work quickly. Top and the bottom just kind of right where they would possibly look. Then you gotta line everything up. Now, something I like to do is while this is, before it dries, I like to pull, pull the sides up. It's hard to talk when I'm going so fast. And just make sure that I have that lined up. Now it's a good idea to take like um, a bone folder and we're gonna go in through the sides and just really press down. I just mostly want to make sure that hot glue is pressed down because everything else is going to take a little bit of time. But And before, before it's too late, make sure I have the top to the top. Yes, I do. Okay. And you can use your bone folder. I, it's hard to, it's really hard for me to get a good view of this but you can press down and it's gonna take time to dry, but we're just wanting to make sure everything's pressed down as good as we can. <laughs> I think my paper clip just blew off. I go like this. So the next step is patience. You're gonna wait. I'm not even gonna glue down the sides yet. I'm gonna close this shut and I'm gonna let this dry for, I mean, overnight is best, but a few hours at least, and then you will glue down the sides, so. We're gonna do that, we're gonna let everything dry and I'll be back to finish the sides up. So once everything is dry, then that's when we're gonna go in and glue down the sides. I'm gonna still be careful because I haven't let mine dry the full time, but what you're gonna do is add more glue on these sides here. So, you always want to make sure to get the glue really good down into like the groove as well. So again, you're just going to glue everything down. And then again, you're going to close everything up and really let everything dry. This is super important. I'm going to use my bone folder to really get that fabric down into the groove here. Well, <laughs> and then just close that up. Do the same thing to this side. And this is what is really locking everything into place and holding everything down. So again, take your time, use good glue, you'll be good. You could use super glue, uh, sorry, hot glue. You could use hot glue here if you want to. Um, I think I'm okay with what I am using, so. Okay, so I am now going to close everything up, let it dry. I did want to mention really quick before I end the video that if you want, this is a good time to also add your lace if you want to cover up the side here and you can just go ahead and add lace to give it a pretty appearance. I'm going to do a final flip through of this journal um, in a future video. But remember, use your bone folder and just really get into in between each 
signature. In fact, you could carefully open it up. I just don't like to move things around too much at this point and really press down in between there. So I hope this was a good tutorial for you guys. I hope it gave you the confidence to do this kind of binding. Um, I'm excited to show you the final journal, but I'm going to let it dry now. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye guys.